I'm so glad you could join us today. I've got messages when you want them. Mm. I also checked out Kazanu. There are multiple listings in the white pages. I got the page, but you'll have to figure out the right one. Great, thanks. Now, are you going to tell me what happened yesterday with Malia Getty, or <laughs> is it just too embarrassing? Mm. Don't tell me you actually got to see her. Are the star at tonight? Gabriel, you don't seriously think she's interested. She can have any man in the city. You know, men with bank accounts. You underestimate the Knight family's tragic poet samurai appeal. When Daddy married Mom, she was the hottest catch in town. Hmm. Huh. I always suspected there was something fishy in your family tree. But seriously, I think you should be careful. Oh, Grace. I'm serious. I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach about this. It's called jealousy, my dear. And you're right. You should be jealous of Malia Getty, as should every woman on this planet. I just... Uh, oh, never mind. I'll just fix these books. Your life is in your own slippery little hands. The point is to get it into somebody else's hands. And soon. Hey, kids. Huh? Bruno. Gabe Pet, I just popped in to see if you're desperate enough to sell me that painting. How much would you give me for it, Bruno? Gabriel, don't you dare sell your father's painting. Well, I guess I don't need the money that badly. From the looks of this shop, I'm sure you will, my boy. And soon. Times Pickle Hume, dated June 20, 1993. Gabriel scans over an uninteresting front page. Under the cultural events section, there's a notice about a lecture on African religions. The lecture is at Tulane University. Gabriel's horoscope for the day. An evil eye is upon you. Change course before it's too late. Lighten up. Somewhere, there's a New Orleans phone book missing one of its C pages. Do you know anything about this? Sure. I'm the one that gave that to you. Remember? Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Your pal Mosley called. He left a message that they're interrogating a suspect this morning and you might want to be there. Sounds fun. Mm-hmm. I bet. The curtain doesn't provide much privacy. But Gabriel's rarely in his bedroom during shop hours anyway. Is anyone back there? Don't be silly. Who would be back there? Who'd want to be back there? Gabriel's bedroom is also his office, his studio, and library. Gabriel's not in the mood for tidying up. The carpet was Grand's. She gave it to Gabriel to cheer the place up. Lying there is all the rug does.
It's Gabriel's bed. Unmade as usual. It's no use. I can't sleep. Gabriel likes a subdued lighting effect in his studio. I'll just leave it on. A poster on the wall advertises Mardi Gras, the biggest party of the year in New Orleans. The dresser holds a meager supply of underwear and 38 pairs of mismatched socks. Gabriel doesn't feel like rearranging the furniture right now. There's a flashlight on the dresser. This building's wiring leaves a lot to be desired. I might need a flashlight. Gabriel's robe hangs on the wall. It's a bit hot for it in June, though. No thanks. I don't have time to relax. Jeans and t-shirts. All my clothes look the same, so why change them? A little cold bubbly and brie cheese is about all Gabriel's fridge ever has in it. Bills from last Christmas gather dust on the door. The refrigerator is already functioning. Grace says the refrigerator is alive, but it hasn't spoken yet. Gabriel, shut the refrigerator, please. I could smell it from here. Women. It's Gabriel's bathroom. I really got to get around to cleaning up in there. I don't need to, thanks. The medicine cabinet contains a few old prescriptions, personal hygiene stuff, and lots of hair products, including some hair gel. I'll take this hair gel. You never know when you'll need a touch-up. Mardi Gras mementos left by some female or other. I don't think putting on a Mardi Gras mask right now would help. Several dozen books, including a few of Gabriel's novels, occupy the shelves above his desk. All the shelves do is hold books. The wastebasket overflows with crumpled pages of mediocre glory. I'm not gonna empty the damn thing now. Gabriel's desk has been gathering dust since his last novel. There's nothing interesting in there. An office chair waits for Gabriel to sit down and write something. Gabriel's reference books occupy a space near his typewriter. I like them where they are. I don't need them right now. The typewriter is beginning to accumulate cobwebs. Should I feel guilty? Nah. Writer's block. The typewriter is too heavy to lug round. Another month of missing my mortgage, I'll be pushing those pencils on the street. If Gabriel picked up a pencil, he might actually have to write something. A small trunk serves as a table for the radio. Gabriel already knows what's in the trunk, and he doesn't want it. Gabriel's mini stereo isn't exactly high fidelity. 
Then again, need a Z. Do you have men problems? Someone put a hex on you? Call Sister Cross through the power of love and Lord Jesus Christ, he can fix what's ailing you. The desk phone is cheap, but functional. Hello. Hi. Is this the Kazunu residence? Yes. What can I do for you? Do you or does anyone in your family patronize the Dixieland drugstore? I'm a busy man. What are you selling? Nothing. Good. Goodbye. Hi, this is Ray Bob Gilmey saying come on down to Gilmey Auto Center for the best deals in new and used transportation. You'll be glad you did. Hello? Hi. Sorry to bother you again, but I was wondering if you know anything about voodoo. I don't believe this. Buzz off, guy! Hello, Casano Residence? Hi. I was wondering if you could help me. Yeah? A woman in the Dixieland drugstore dropped her purse today, and the name Kazanu was inside it. Dixieland drugstore? Never heard of it. Sorry. At Giant Discount Bookstore, we discount every title 50%. When you see our selection and prices, you will never want to shop with those little guys again. Hello? Casano Residence? Hi. I called before about the Dixieland drugstore. I told you it wasn't me. Stop bothering me. Casano Residence, may I help you? Hi. You want a customer raffle at the Dixieland drugstore? No soliciting, please. Casano Residence, may I help you? I'm calling from the Dixieland Drugstore. You've won a prize. Hmm. And I suppose you're Ed McMahon. Stop calling me. You're listening to KLEB in New Orleans, where we play the best music 24 hours a day. Don't that die. Agent Critter's Animal Clinic, this is Melissa. Do you know anything about snakes? Our doctors see just about any type of animals, but we don't get many snakes. Okay, thanks. Know anything about animal sacrifice? What are you, some kind of sicko? Do you have a Madame Kazonu as a client? Madame Kazonu? Sure, I know her. She's not here right now, though. Really? Hmm. She told me she'd be there. Uh, would you happen to have an address by any chance? Um, uh, yes. But I'm not sure I should give it out. Who are you again? She's my aunt, and I've sort of lost touch. I'm sorry, but I don't feel right about giving her address out. Goodbye. She's won a major prize. I really don't think I can. Sorry. It's frightening. It's terrifying. Don't miss Run for Your Life. Now playing at the St. Antoine Theater. Hello? I'm calling from the Dixieland Drugstore. We have an order for you. Castro, be quiet! Who is this? 
I'm a friend of the owner. I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. Yes? Hi. I called earlier about your drugstore order. Harsh Castro! I told you, I don't know what you're talking about. Agent Critter's Animal Clinic, this is Melissa. About Madame Casanu? Yes? I really need to get her address. I just don't know. Why did you need it again? I'm worried about Castro. He's missed three dance lessons. Castro? Her little doggy? Oh, he's so sweet. Well, I guess if you know Castro, it's okay. Uh, her address is 345 Dauphine. Thanks. The jar contains frou-frou hair gel. The label on the hair gel jar talks about mysterious Hawaiian roots and ancient oriental secrets. The copy is almost as believable as Gabriel's novel. My hair looks perfect the way it is at the moment. Do you know anything about this? Yeah. You should cut that mop of yours and throw that stuff away. Never. Gabriel got the flashlight free in the mail when he ordered a magazine subscription. It works, though. At the moment, the flashlight has printed on it the legend, Cold Cell Brokers. Mortgages are us. Do you know anything about this? It's your flashlight, you know, something you can actually turn on. There's enough light without the flashlight at the moment. I've got some things I need to do. Have fun. Gabriel stands at the door of an old French Quarter residence. The neighborhood is a little shabby, but this particular building is freshly painted. There's no one outside the house to talk to. Hall windows flank the front of the mansion. It would be better to be invited inside. Gabriel cannot see anything to do on that part of the residence. Pretty shutters frame the windows. Like many New Orleans buildings, this one is accented with ornamental wrought iron. Well-worn stone steps lead up to the front door. The door frame is a beautiful example of traditional New Orleans architecture. The front door is solid hardwood and at least a century old. It's an ornate brass door knocker. Yes? Who is it? Hi, I'm doing an article on voodoo and I heard that you... I am a good Catholic young man. Take your evil influence elsewhere. But I just have a few questions. I can feel the evil eye. Go away. Yes? Who is it? I have some fine magazine subscriptions for sale. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested. 
I've got some great pet supplies. Could you, could you cool it, old doggy? Castro has everything he needs. Don't you, Castro? Thanks a lot, Castro. Land shark. You have no Bill Murray. Please let me talk to you, Madame Kazonu. I don't talk to strangers, young man. Yes? Who is it? Hi. I'm doing an article on voodoo, and I heard that you... I told you no. This house is under the protection of the saints. Now, go away. Yes? Who is it? Wrong house. Never mind. Fine. Good day. Glad you made it. It'll give you a feel for how I am in action. You know, handling suspects, that sort of thing. I'm sure it'll be invigorating. Uh, who is this guy, anyway? Calls himself Crash. He's been an informant for us before, mostly helping us bust small-time pimps and dealers trying to break into the territory. Well, he's been staying invisible during these murders, but we picked him up this morning to Jackson Square. Pushing coke? He knows something. Call it Detective's Instinct. Detective's Instinct. <laughs> Got it. Alright, Crash. I want to hear about these murders. You've been present at the so-called voodoo ritual? I don't know nothing. I told you. Come on now, you can tell me. Do you know anyone who's been to these rituals? Look. I, I can't say nothing. You gotta let me go, man. Now you relax. No one knows you're here. The man who picked you up were plain clothesmen. Plain clothes? Like you could fool them. <laughs> they know I'm here. They've got ears all over the city. They know everything. Now who are they, Crash? Are they the ones doing the murders? Let me go! If you're so worried about being detained, start talking. You tell me what I want to hear, and maybe I can get you in the Witness Protection Program. But you have to earn it. Witness Protection? Are you crazy? Don't make me laugh. Jesus, just let me out of here. Now come on, who's behind these murders, Crash? Why are the victims all members of the Underworld? By now they know I'm here. I mean, it's, it's different when I'm supposed to come here. Or if I can send a message. Tell him I didn't say nothing. Christ, he's freaking useless. Take him back to detaining, would you, Tony? I tell you, times like this, I'd kill for true, sir, and damn the civil rights. Can I quote you on that? Huh? Hell no. Damn! We can only keep him for 24 hours. Tomorrow morning, I might have to let him go. Sorry it wasn't more exciting. Yeah, for the book, I mean. Maybe you can punch it up some. You know, what they call that. Fiction, that's it. It certainly is. I'll see what I can do. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. What's the status on the voodoo murders case? It sure as hell ain't going well. There's a lot of breaks being applied in different areas of the investigation. We're getting some real info on the victims now, and they're not exactly upstanding citizens. And I was hoping to get more out of Crash, but he's scared shitless. We'll have to let him go tomorrow morning. What's the status on the voodoo murders case? I told you, it's going for shit.
I'll let you get back to it. Later, Knight. Looks like the lecture is just starting. Gabriel decides to record the session. Voodoo is the tribal religion of Africa. But the name Voodoo is actually a banner heading under which resides an entire body of distinct tribal belief systems. The word Voodoo may sound familiar to you. What is known in the States as Voodoo is actually an amalgamation of African religious systems. Voodoo and European religions, primarily Catholicism. All of the subcults of African voodoo have certain things in common. The most important is the worship of a pantheon of spirits instead of the single deity that the Christian and Muslim systems have. Some of these spirits are elementals. Some relate to specific tasks or places. Some represent important tribal leaders who have died. This spirit worship is what makes voodoo so easily adaptable. With all those spirits, it's no problem to add a few more. Say, for example, the Virgin Mary. At the height of tribal Africa, warfare was common. The one tribe would conquer another, and the Loa, important in the conqueror's tribal system, would be adopted readily into the conquered tribe's Loa pantheon. In this way, many of the Voodoo cults spread and mingled throughout tribal Africa, enriching the belief system and causing innumerable offshoots. The basis for the Voodoo religion seems to be as old as man himself. It has much in common with many early pagan practices. Animal totems, sympathetic magic, elemental spirits in the trees, the heavens, the bodies of the sick. Africa is believed by many to be the cradle of the human race. Some of the Voodoo Loa may be as old as the Garden of Eden itself. We still can't explain some of the real power of these primal religions. And note, I said primal, not primitive. There are African Bokors who baffle our scientists with their supernatural powers. Now, let's discuss the elements of Voodoo. <sighs> Fascinating guy. In Voodoo, the spirits are called the Loa. During a Voodoo ceremony, celebrants are possessed by the Loa. And this is called being ridden. The human worshipper is seen as a horse, and the loa as the divine horseman. A person being ridden by a loa takes on the characteristics of that spirit and becomes, in effect, merely a vessel for the more powerful entity. Some of the older, original Africa loa include Dambala, the great serpent god, his ruler, the mistress of love. Papa Nebo, or Gede, the Lord of Death. Agwe, the Spirit of Water. Legba, Spirit of the Crossroads. And the cruelest and most dangerous, Ogun Badagri, the Lord of Destruction. Ugh. Ugh. I gotta get more sleep at night. Uh, a tribe-specific Loa can have as much or more power as the more widely worshipped Loa. For instance, a particular tribe might revere highly the Loa of an ancestor who was a legendary hunter or politician. Voodoo temples are called Hounfors. Their priests, Hangun or Bokors. Their priestesses, Mama Loa. In a Voodoo Hounfor, there's a ritual circle marked by a center pole called a Potomitan. The ritual circle is prepared with a vebe, a pattern of symbols. Each tribe's vebe is slightly different, consisting of complex symbols that identify their special loa. During ritual conclaves, uh, initiates dance under the supervision of a bokor and a mama loa, or head priestess. The use of totems or animal masks and markings was not uncommon in the original African ceremonies. 
Now, though, all but the oldest sects have abandoned this practice. Ritual objects used during the conclaves include the ritual gourd or asson, the ritual knife or kubasa. That knife gives me the chills. The ritual whip or fwet kash. And the ritual coffin or seke madule. These items are often optional, called for by the Mamaloa for specific magical rituals. The Mamaloa is the most powerful figure in any Voodoo sect. Voodoo is a truly matriarchal system. Even the Bokor knows his power is limited. The Mamaloa is the supreme woman. She butterflies. Fireflies. Firelight. I don't know what this is. Gabriel? Mm, what? I can't see. Gabriel! Get in! Man, it's too small for me. You must get in, Gabriel. It's not mine. Too small. Hide, Gabriel. Hide! No! No! Let me out! Help! Young man. The lecture is over. Oh my god, sorry. Gabriel's in one of the lecture halls at Tulane University. The lecture hall is deserted. That door exits the lecture hall. A lighted sign says, Exit. Those doors lead to the projection booth. There's no one in the projection booth. The seats are the fold-down kind. The seats are bolted to the floor. A projection screen dominates the front of the hall. The podium. Partridge is thrown. Gabriel isn't in the mood to give a lecture. The university would not appreciate that. Gabriel doesn't need to take that from the lecture hall. There's a PA speaker on the wall. The stage provides theatrical lecture opportunities for theatrical professors such as Hartridge. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. Greek night at the Alpha Psi Omega frat house. It looks like it took place sometime last spring. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. There's a notice for a lecture on investigative reporting techniques to be given by octogenarian Pulitzer Prize winner Laura Bo Dorian. Unfortunately, it's weeks away, but at time Gabriel will have to have learned on his own. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. Need a ride to LA the last weekend in August. I wouldn't go there if you paid me. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. Work out of your home and make up to 2000 a week in your spare time. Call 555-6789. I actually called them once. You sell cat food over the phone. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. We'll do algebra or biology homework for food. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. Jazz jam session every Tuesday at 7 in the music building. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. Haircuts for $10 a head. 
perms for $20 at the Tulane Beauty School West Campus. Like I'd let an amateur touch these locks. There's a door on one side of the stage. Are you a student? No. My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Well, you have walked into my private office, Mr. Knight. I hope you have something worthwhile to do here. If you figure it out, let me know. Dr. Hartridge's office is crowded with masks, carved figures, and strange objects. It's Hartridge's file cabinet. It looks heavy. Please don't touch that. An old globe sits atop Hartridge's file cabinet. Gabriel fights the urge to give the globe a spin. Gabriel doesn't want to take that from Hartridge's office. The carved stone head looks African and very old. Gabriel doesn't want to disturb Hartridge's treasures. Ask it what? Talking to that would be unenlightening. That mask is quite hideous. Gabriel doesn't see any use in consulting that. The squatter grins maliciously at Gabriel. It's an enormous stone head. The shelves behind Hartridge's desk are full of old books. Gabriel's seen enough old books to last a lifetime. Exotic fish lend even more color to the cluttered office. The fish tank is as on as it's likely to get, and turning it off would kill the fish. Gabriel doesn't want to upset the fish. You want me to talk to a fish? Did you know there's a whole branch of archaeology devoted to garbage? Maybe you should look into it, hmm? Dr. Hartridge's desk is remarkably neat, especially considering the rest of the room. The visitor's chair looks unsteady and a little low to the ground. That's right, just make yourself at home. Dr. Hartridge's sharp eyed and even sharper tongue. When he condescends to look at Gabriel at all, it's with a dismissive glare. Your lecture was terrific. Oh, you think so? You were snoring so loud I didn't think you'd heard it. You must travel a lot. Yes, to Africa, mainly. I suppose having all this voodoo stuff sitting around doesn't make you nervous at all. It's voodoo stuff, and no. Why should it? I'm very interested in voodoo myself right now. How nice for you. Hey, you've got quite a collection of goodies here. My travels have been rewarding, yes. And if I pick your brain? Not if it will get you out of my office. Tell me about yourself. All right, Mr. Knight, I'm... 35, a fully tenured professor at this university, as well as a fellow at Cambridge. My doctorate was obtained at Syracuse. Yes, Syracuse, in religious studies. I'm an agnostic, but I find human belief systems fascinating. I specialize in African religions because I grew up there. My father was a Protestant missionary. And I am heterosexual when I practice sex at all, which isn't very often. Any other questions? Uh, no. Fine. I'd really like to know more about you. There have been several articles written about me, Mr. Knight, as well as blurbs on my book jackets. If you want a biography, read. What can you tell me about voodoo? You already sat through my lecture on the subject, Mr. Knight. Perhaps next time you could stay awake and learn something. 
What can you tell me about New Orleans? I find it interesting to see the occasional fragment of voodoo practices in the everyday culture of New Orleans. What else can you tell me about New Orleans? Uh, the Catholic Church has always dominated in New Orleans, and its imagery, in turn, has dominated New Orleans voodoo. What else can you tell me about New Orleans? If there's more you wish to know, perhaps you should read my books. Do you know anything about snakes? I'm not a zoologist, Mr. Knight, but I know all I care to about reptiles. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? It's June 23rd, the feast day of St. John the Baptist. The June 23rd has been a sacred day since the earliest times. Ancient sun worshippers used to roll a flaming wheel down a hill to celebrate the sun's descent on that day. A burning wheel? Huh. Do you have any idea what Cabri Saint Cœur means? Cabri Saint Cœur? Yes, I do. It's a Haitian term, I believe. It's French, and literally translates as goat without horns. As in a female goat? No, as in a human sacrifice. Sacrifices in voodoo are usually of the animal variety. Chickens, bulls, goats. If the gods demand a goat without horns, it means a human being. What was that translation of a Cabri Saint Corps again? I'm not in the habit of repeating myself, Mr. Knight. Tell me more about human sacrifice. It's uh, very rare. Most Voodoo practices do not include human sacrifice as a matter of record, but it is theoretically possible if that's what the gods demand. For example, one of the chants I had translated for me from a Haitian ritual went like this. Mistress Azuli, come and aid us. If a cock is demanded, we will give it. If a bull will suffice, behold it. But if a goat without horns is required for sacrifice, oh where will we find one? Azuli is the gentlest of Loa, so they call on her for mercy. But I have seen grown and powerful Hungan tremble before a possession by one of the more violent Loa, such as Papa Nebo. Clearly, they are afraid that something of the sort will be ordered, or that the Loa will simply take it for themselves. Tell me more about human sacrifice. I wouldn't dwell on it. Most Vudun sects probably haven't seen a human sacrifice for several generations. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? While I find the colloquial bastardizations of Vudun somewhat interesting from a surely intellectual point of view, there's not a lot of relation between people like Laveau and true voodoo practices. Do you know anything about animal masks? As I said in my lecture, which I assume you actually listened to, is that animal masks totems are used extensively in most African voodoo religions. Tell me about Beves. If you'd taken notes during my lecture, you wouldn't have to ask. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I've read about them in the papers. I must admit to some interest. But according to the newspapers, the voodoo aspect is faked, so I haven't really pursued it. You know how Americans, especially Hollywood, treats voodoo. I'm sure there are many so-called practitioners out there that have no idea what they're doing or the power they're playing with. What do you know about the voodoo murders? As I said, I don't know anything but what the papers say. According to them, there's no reason for me to be interested. Is there anything you can tell me about the voodoo aspects of this photograph? Hmm, this is serious voodoo ritual. Nasty stuff. In what way? Let's see. I can't make out much detail from this photograph. Except for the corpse, of course. But the wound, the face. And what little I can see of the ritual paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. Reminded me of certain black voodoo and practices. 
very rare. I've never witnessed them myself, you understand? Really? Interesting. Thanks. Can you tell me anything more about this photograph? No, I'm no coroner, and I can't tell much more about the voodoo end from that photograph. Can you tell me anything about this? No, I'm afraid I can't. I'll be going. Goodbye. you. Miss Giddy is not at home, sir. Can you tell me where she is? It's very important. She's visiting her mother's grave, Mr. Knight. Something even you can't be tasteless enough to want to interrupt. I told you, Miss Giddy is out. San Luis Cemetery number one is one of the most historic and beautiful places in the French Quarter. An old man tends the cemetery with movements akin to a slow drawl. The old man wouldn't appreciate that. Hello there, got a sec? You got something to say, son? How's business today? About like every day. It's what you call a seller's market. You been working here a long time? Longer than you been alive, son. I may have to be here longer than you'll be alive, for that matter. <laughs> Mind if I pick your brain a minute? Go ahead. These folks ain't in no hurry. Tell me about yourself. My name is Toussaint Gervais. I'm the watchman here at St. Louis Number 1. What exactly do you do here? Oh, I keep the place tidy, cause, but a big part of my job, too, is looking out for the grievers, you know. People come to pay their respects, and they need looking out for. Sometimes they so grief-bound, they don't know what they doing. Tell me about yourself. That's about all there is to say. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery Number 1. You know why the dead are buried in tombs and not in the ground, don't you? The water table's too high. Them coffins would float right out of their graves. <laughs> Them dead would go floating right down into the quarter. <laughs> Course if it were Mardi Gras, nobody'd even notice. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery Number 1. It's a historical place. People buried in here from the Civil War and back further, too. Take a look around, you'll see. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery Number 1. Just look around, just look around. You get the feel of the place. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Seems like everybody want to visit New Orleans at least once in their lives. And they love the cemetery tour. I see tourists in here every day of the year. What can you tell me about New Orleans? There's lots of things to see here, but none are as beautiful as the St. Louis Cemetery Number 1. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Hey, if you want to know more, you should ask somebody else. What can you tell me about voodoo? They say it was part of an old religion from Africa, brought here by slaves. What can you tell me about voodoo? I don't really care to talk about it. I don't do it none myself. 
Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? I see snakes around here all the time. Most of them ain't poisonous, of course. Do you know anything about snakes? I don't mind snakes myself, but lots of folks are afraid of them. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? Why, St. John the Baptist is the patron saint of voodoo. Sometimes we get some weird goings on in that cemetery on that night. More often a few nights before, people taking grave dirt, bones, and mold. That's pretty disgusting. <laughs> yep. Don't know what they do with them, but it can't be pretty. What else can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I told you all I know about that. Do you have any idea what Cabri saint Gaur means? No, no, can't say that I do. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Sure, sure. She was the voodoo queen of New Orleans. A powerful voodoo queen and a powerful sorceress. Believers still come to her tomb, you know. They write secret marks on the walls, leaving offerings and things. Then there's the tourists. They come out of curiosity. As a matter of fact, that big Dr. John fella from the Voodoo Museum, he's here at least once today. But Marie Laveau's tomb ain't the only one the believers visit and make markings and leave offerings at. You said there were other marked tombs? <laughs> yep. I seen bull hearts left on tombs and a nest of vulture feathers, plates of peas and corn green, animal parts, human parts even it looked like. Male parts if you get my meaning. And this at one of the great family crypts, mind you. Odd how them types just pick a spot and stick to it. What other tombs get marked? Can you show me? No, 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 I ain't one for naming names. I don't like to encourage that kind of thing. It's distressing to the families, and rightly so. Don't know how that sort of thing gets started. Why folks come to start leaving stuff at that one spot. But it happens all the same. What else can you tell me about Marie Laveau? Her tombs on all our tours. Even the Baptists come round here to gawk. Course, you may not know this, but some of the real serious voodoo types argue that she ain't in this one at all. But down in an unmarked tomb in number three. It's all the same to me, I say. Save me a lot of cleanup work if she weren't here, if you ask me. What else can you tell me about Marie Laveau? Boy, go out and buy a book if you really want to know. I ain't too sure my facts these days know how. Do you know anything about animal masks? I don't know what you're talking about. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Black voodoo? I've seen lots of voodoo markings in this cemetery. I've seen graves dug up and stuff you don't want to know about stolen from them. But voodoo, black voodoo, sounds like a devil of a distinction, you ask me. Do you know anything about black voodoo? I told you it's all one to me. Do you know anything about Veves? I don't know what you're talking about. Does this mean anything to you? Jesus, Mary and Joseph, son. Don't be showing that kind of thing to me. I'm an old man. I'm liable to just keel right over on you. Sorry. Does this mean anything to you? Nope. A high iron fence with sharp spikes surrounds the cemetery. Gabriel doesn't want to disturb that part of the cemetery. The fence is firmly planted. A marble snake. Now that's cheerful. The marble denizens of the cemetery only stare back blankly. A stone angel stands silently before a tomb. 
the statue doesn't seem to work that way. The marble angel is heavier than she looks. An angel with a cross stands guard over one of the tombs. Vases seem to be a favorite decoration for the dead. It's an imposing marble tomb from the last century. Gabriel can barely make out the name. Hamilton. The marble and granite tombs are quite heavy. No way. Something might answer. The tomb is securely closed. This old tomb is in a sorry state of disrepair. There's probably no one left in the family to maintain it. New Orleans is famous for its above-ground tombs. The high-water table prevents bodies from being interred underground. The name Ross is inscribed on this old tomb. This is the tomb of Marie Laveau, voodoo queen of New Orleans. Odd-looking marks adorn the Laveau tomb wall. Food, trinkets, and more unsettling things have been left at Marie Laveau's tomb as offerings from believers. No thanks. Near the Laveau tomb is a piece of red brick. Undoubtedly a cast off from spiritual graffiti writers. The marks are reddish in color and reminds Gabriel of crosses. They look like they've been here a few days at least. The tomb wall doesn't respond. Gabriel can't take anything from the tomb wall that way. I want a copy of these strange marks. It's Gabriel's sketch of the series of crosses from the Laveau tomb wall. Looking at the series of crosses, Gabriel can't help but to think that they have a pattern and a meaning he is not comprehending. Could I have a minute of your time? What you need, boy? Does this mean anything to you? Sure. I see them marks all the time on tombs. Don't know what they mean, though. Know? It's a piece of brick. Does this mean anything to you? It's a piece of brick. You can find them all over the cemetery. This above-ground tomb is only large enough to accommodate one resident. The Wright family tomb. Several of Gabriel and Grand's family members are laid to rest here. It's rather rude to interrogate the dead. If Gabriel wants to address his ancestors, he should choose a specific plaque. A statue of a small child clings to a cross atop the right tomb. I don't want to do that. 
the marble residents of the city of the dead say nothing. The marker reads, Mera plant a right. These are grands, folks. I never knew them. The marker reads, Franklin Wright. These are grands, folks. I never knew them. The marker reads, Harley Wright. Grand sister. She died young. The marker reads, Harrison Knight. Granddaddy. The marker reads, Philip Knight. Daddy. The marker reads, Margaret Templeton Knight. My mother. Oh, uh, hi. I'm Rebecca's grandson. Much as when they were alive, the right elders give no response. Grand talks a lot about you, Harley. How's it going, Granddaddy? Hey, Daddy. Miss you, Mom. This family tomb bears the inscription, Rest in Peace. And the name, Fuller Mill. A wrought iron fence surrounds this tomb. I hope that's to keep people out. Several generations of an old New Orleans family rest here, in relative peace. Here and there in the cemetery, straggly plants grow in stone planters. Cable doesn't need any more house plants. An odd monument highlights one grave site. It looks vaguely reptilian. The monument isn't going anywhere. A grinning grotesque tops one section of the cemetery fence. Better to leave the grinning grotesquery where it is. The grotesquery does not reply. Amalia. Mr. Knight, what are you doing here? Uh, my family's tomb is here. Mine too. I noticed. Subtle. Well, Mr. Knight, if there's nothing else. Don't go. I need to talk to you. Whatever for. I can't stop thinking about you. I've been in your thoughts too. I can see it in your eyes. Mr. Knight, you don't know anything about me. I'm not in a position to get involved. I've said that a million times myself, but this is different. I think we both know we can't fight it. Oh, I can't believe I'm saying this. I have so many obligations. My family is very traditional. You wouldn't understand. Hey, I love tradition. I've seen Fiddler on the Roof a hundred times. This isn't a musical, Mr. Knight. We live in different worlds. Look. I know you've got more money than God. Do you think I care? Do you think that's why I'm saying this? No, I don't. Why don't you come see my world? I have a little bookshop, St. George's, on Bourbon. I know. See? I knew it. You're crazy about me, too. Come by tonight. Please. My world isn't so bad. I'm sorry, but there's no place for someone like you in my life. Not now, not ever. Damn it! This old tomb has a sword carved into the stone below the name of the deceased. This tomb is smaller than most others in the cemetery. Kind of a pup tent for the dead. Most of the plaster has fallen away over the years to reveal walls of red brick. A stone angel leans down to gaze at something unseen. 
the heavy marble doesn't budge. An angel draped dramatically over a stone plinth marks the entrance to a large tomb. The imposing tomb is elaborately labeled Gede. Two enormous vases flank the front of the Gedi tomb. Two heavy, solid marble doors provide an entrance to the tomb. Open sesame. Nope, that doesn't work. The doors are heavy and shut tight. There's a small marble plate near the tomb doors. The plate is locked in position. There's a keyhole on the plate. But Gabriel can't operate that without a key. With a few exceptions, these tombs are all beginning to look alike. 